can't believe I need to do this right now. This is the moment I realized that the rebuilt engine is dead. I bought this broken BMW E92 for cheap in the other side of the country hoping it would be an easy fix. But it turned out the engine was blown. So in the previous episode we rebuilt the entire engine. But today we will put it fully together, reinstall it back in the car and start it for the first time. Then something bad happens. I can't believe that we need to do this right now. Spark plugs. Spark plugs, 23 newton meters. So then this thing. Then we can install the water pump. Just like this. Then we can plug in the schooling line going into the head. Then the gaskets. Then on with the manifold. I ordered some new studs as well because many of them was missing for some reason. Exhaust manifold bolts, 20 newton meters. So I couldn't find where this bracket goes and then I found out that it goes on the, on the housing, on the gearbox. Now the right side engine mount bracket. It's this way probably, yep. Now the flywheel and the bolts with a little bit of thread lock. Now I lock the flex plate and it is torqued to 130 newton meters. So when we removed the engine, I found out that the left engine mount was completely loose. There was, there was no bolts holding it. And I'm not talking about the nut, I'm talking about the two bolts holding the mount to the subframe. Uh, I have no idea why that would be if the workshop, well, they had the head off. I don't know. I have ordered the bolts, I'm supposed to get them tomorrow. I don't want to wait until tomorrow, so I removed one of the bolts from that one and I put in that one. So at least there's one bolt in each side now. And when I get the bolts, I can just swap them in from the under. I also lifted up the gearbox lightly because we need to manage to fit the exhaust end in through that hole down there. So that's probably gonna be tricky. It's gonna be easier with the gearbox lifted up. This is gonna be interesting to say the least. manifold on the engine mount. So the engine is at completely wrong angle if we put it on this one. So I know it's not that good, but I will put it on the exhaust manifold. I have no choice because the engine is not going in well.
So I managed to put in one bolt at the bottom. So these ones, all the bolts for the housing is M10 bolts and that is 45 newton meters. I'm not gonna go through the struggle of torquing them down with the torque wrench. 45 is not that much anyway, so you can, you can feel around how much is 45. That's good. That's good. Now I jacked up the gearbox a bit just so I have more space to play with. <coughs> that's good. Now I have one more on the side, but that we will access from under. Also here is the little bracket that holds the cable for the O2 sensor. The torque converter. Now we have M8 bolts and they are torqued to only 26 newton meters. When I was under the car, I also replaced the negative terminal from the engine to the chases because you can see it's falling apart. Now I want to put on steering column. Okay. Now before I lower the car down, I want to put the AC compressor. Here's the AC bolt. Now plug in the water pump. Then this whole massive mess. So I tightened the exhaust because I had forgot that. And I also uh, put on a little ground cable that is under the water pump on the bed plate. Engine mounts, 56. Now in with the starter. <clears throat> now we can install the alternator. And then we can put on the belt. So yesterday I worked a bit late, but I basically did everything up here that needs to be done. All the plugs are connected, everything is connected, and everything is, well, where it should be. There was a lot of plugs, but most of them you can't really mess up because they have different lengths, different connectors. Just the manifold, there are two plugs on the top, one little plug on the bottom and one little plug on the side. So we don't need to forget to plug that in. Also, now when I check the repair manual, the way you're supposed to remove and install the manifold is with the alternator removed. But I always used to do it with the alternator in, but now I have the belt on, so I'm not gonna remove it. The manifold. So there are five bolts that go up. We was missing one, which was this one. And we was also missing the two bolts, which I also bought, that are down here. They screw onto the, that bracket, to the engine mount. 
replace these gaskets. Now I saw there was a little bit of oil in the manifold. So now I'm draining it. Very interesting because that oil probably entered through the PCV system. So now last inspection. Here, everything is connected properly. Now we need to plug in the connector. Then I also pushed on a little vacuum sensor into place, there is a special bracket for it. This is what you need to access the bolt at the bottom. Then the manifold bolts 15. Ay, it's leaking. We are very close the first start. Now I'm getting a bit nervous. So connect the coolant, connect the petrol, then the vortex beater, then this connector for the rail pressure. I think now there shouldn't be a single connector that, well, isn't connected. Well, there is 4.25 liters of oil that goes into this engine. Oil filter, I spoke to the machine guy. He said that I should run this oil for maybe 300 kilometers and then change it because piston rings, they're gonna, they need to bed in. When they bed in, they, well, release some material and stuff. So run this for 300 kilometers, then we will swap it out. Loop up these O-rings. Now I'm gonna lower the rear of the car down a bit so it's like more level. Then I'm gonna connect the batteries. Now I need to add some blue coolant. Coolant. Or are we leaking somewhere? I don't think so. Now I need to go to pick up some more coolant. Now I picked up some more coolant. Since the water pump is electric, we need to manually start it. So it pumps coolant through the system and then we need to open the bleed screws. First, turn on the ignition, then put the fan on the lowest setting and press the gas pedal for 30 seconds. One, two. Now you can hear the pump circulating. You can hear it and you can see it pushing well coolant out. So now we'll open this big bleed screw here until it lets out coolant, then I'm gonna close it. Now I removed fuse 80 and 88, because these fuses were for the fuel pump. Now I will crank it over. I forgot to connect the positive terminal. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I guess it cranked over enough now. Let's fire it up, I guess. Oh, one injector wasn't plugged in. From what I saw, this car has muffler delete and you can hear it, it's a bit louder than usual. Sounds decent though. So then after running a bit, the car started to, I don't know, jump a bit in revs. So I decided to turn it off and when I was gonna start it again, it didn't start. Just no crank, nothing. So then I spent a good time diagnosing and this is a second hand starter that I had to go to pick up and that's what it's supposed to be. And then you can see this one works properly. But when I do the same on the, I had to remove the alternator, ear box, just to get access to this. Nothing's happening. So when I was probably cranking the engine to build up the oil pressure, I'm guessing, well, the starter got hot and, and well went bad. So I will try to remove it without removing the manifold. I just can't be bothered to remove it. So I managed to remove both of the starter bolts, one from the top and one with the long extension from the inside. Oh, finally. Yep. Nothing happening. How did it die? No idea. If you're doing the starter, just remove the manifold. Good. There was a little place behind and not enough to put a whole ratchet. So I use this end, I use it like this and I turned it this way while I had my finger on from behind and just Now I'm putting on the positive terminal. Now there's no alternator, but who cares? I'm just gonna start it and check if it runs. I mean, at least it turns over nicely. Oh, of course. And on with the belt. So you guys saw, still, after the starter replacement it started, but it wasn't running that well. I checked the codes and there was a code for the camshaft position sensor. There was a code for the intake, I swapped them around, then the code moved to the, to the exhaust camshaft. So I checked locally and I managed to get immediately a second hand one. I just went quickly and picked it up. Let's install it and see, well, how it runs. Now let's plug it in. If it runs bad now, I don't know. I spent so much money on it and it, that's how it stinks me.
So now I'm from the future. There was a lot of things wrong that I couldn't figure out. And as we saw in the last clip, the injectors were leaking. Now the way injectors work is they spray fuel from the nozzle. But the whole injector is electronically controlled. So it has to get signal electronically to open so it sprays fuel. So a very good way to test if one of your injectors are leaking is to, let's say, run the car, look at the diagnostics and you see, and then you see what's the fuel pressure. When you switch a car off, the injectors electronically close off. They're not supposed to spray any more fuel. So let's say you have fuel pressure at 150 bars while the car is running. And when you switch the car off, it's not supposed to drop a single bar. So let's say if it's 150 bars, you switch the car off, it's immediately supposed to stay 150 bars if you switch the car off. But in this case, it did not do that. Immediately when I switched the car off, it dropped immediately and it kept dropping, dropping, dropping. Switch the injectors around as you saw in the last clip, then you crank the engine so the fuel pressure builds up then you see if it's leaking. And if it does, well, it's faulty. Another thing, if it's not leaking, it doesn't mean the injector is good. It can still be faulty electronically. So just because it's not leaking, it doesn't mean it's not faulty. So then I picked up these secondhand four injectors and I did test them before I put them this way and they were not leaking. And now the fuel pressure doesn't drop. It stays exactly on what it was when the car is running. I think it was around 150 bars, but the car still had a misfire on bank one. That is cylinder one and cylinder four, and I couldn't figure out anything. I swapped around the injectors, did not help. Swapped around coils, did not help. Even though those spark plugs were new, I decided to swap them around, and I did. And guess what? The codes followed. Then I replaced the two spark plugs, and it helped for maybe five minutes and then the misfire comes back. And also the car is still always smoking when it's running and stuff like that. So then when I checked the spark plugs again, it felt like the spark plugs were even like oily. And also when I removed the cap, there was a bunch of suction in the engine. It's supposed to be suction, but there was too much. Then I Googled, I spoke to people, read on forums, and I came to the conclusion that maybe the CCV system is bad, the oil separator valve. But the problem is this car doesn't have an oil separator. Or well, it does, but it is integrated into the valve cover. It is right here. There's a cap that you can remove. Well, you can remove it and you can replace the whole membrane. This is the membrane. So there's aftermarket membranes that you can order and replace. So you have to remove the cap here put in a new membrane and glue on the cap. I ordered it, but I couldn't wait a few weeks to get it. So I picked up a secondhand valve cover from a car that was supposed to be running properly. I put it on and guess what? This car started running properly or at least some kind of properly. Now the way the membrane works is it's just like a valve that moves. It's like a little membrane. It moves up and down in here. This connector here is what goes to the manifold, the hole in here. And down here is what goes into the engine through here. How I understand this is there's always suction in the manifold. So there's always pressure in there. There's suction in this hole. And this, well, it keeps it closed mostly. But when there are some gases that get collected in here all the way to the membrane, comes up here and it has nowhere to go so it pushes the whole membrane up and that leads to the gases entering into the manifold and back to the intake but I guess this thing was cracked I did destroy it more when I was removing it but you can see it is very brittle and stuff my guess is it was well somehow stuck open and it was always sucking everything into the manifold which would explain why when we removed the manifold from the car originally, there was oil in the manifold. This is the only reason to explain it. This would also is explain why the spark plugs always get destroyed is because there was so much oil that got sucked into the manifold. That would explain it when we fully rebuilt the engine, put it all together, everything was clean. We new spark plugs, we started it. It was running fine for maybe five, 10 minutes and then it started misfiring again because the spark plugs get filled up with oil and well, don't spark anymore properly. 
but then I cleaned up all the oil I could from the manifold from up here with a vacuum. I replaced the spark plugs, put it all together, then went for the first drive. It was running decently, there was sometimes misfires, I guess from there was still being oil into the manifold. So then I drove it for maybe 50 kilometers. And then something very bad happened, incredibly bad. After I stopped, oil pressure light came on. Then I replaced the oil, hoping that maybe the leaking injectors leaked into the oil and well thinned it out, causing it to lower the oil pressure. That was not the case. I checked the oil pressure when the engine is cold, it's perfect. And when engine becomes warm and oil becomes at operating temp, 90-95 Celsius, immediately when you stop the car and the revs go down, the oil pressure light comes on. Oil pressure at that point drops to maybe one bar. So then, first thing I did, I placed this hydraulic valve that controls the oil pressure. This, like a solenoid, controls the pressure because when the engine is on idle, it needs less oil. And when the engine is on high revs, it needs more oil. And this thing is what controls it. I replaced that, did not help. Then I replaced the oil pressure sensor. This thing also did not help. Still low when the engine is warm. Now you may be wondering, what's up with the oil pressure? We lose the oil pressure when the oil is hot. That is when it becomes very liquidy. And from that we can understand that, well, it's leaking somewhere where it's, well, something is warm. If we did not know what is inside the engine, there could be many things that could be wrong. But now we have rebuilt the entire engine and we know that the internals, the rod bearings and stuff like that is good. So I am pretty sure that the problem lies within the balancing shafts. The same balancing shafts that I did not want to delete and I want to keep original. I can't believe I need to do this right now. So we need to drop the oil pan again. To do that we need to drop the subframe and remove the oil pump. This car is a never ending project. To be honest, we should have rather just deleted the balancing shafts, but it is what it is, so we will need to do all the work again. But we saw that there was still a misfire after the kilometers. I think that's because the spark plugs still get filled up with oil, even though I tried to clean the manifold with the manifold in the car. So we probably need to remove the manifold and clean the oil out and then fix the balancing shafts. Then I believe it's gonna drive. I can't believe that we need to do this right now. But what can I say? You live and you learn. But hey, I guess more content for you guys. But this video is long enough already, so we're not gonna do the work in this one. And in the next one, I hope we can finally fix this thing for once and for good. By the way, if there is any other cars that you want to see on the channel, make sure to let me know and I can look into buying. So thanks for watching and well, see you in the next one.